It's an honor to be here today. Um, I think we have an incredible opportunity in front of us. And I'm not just speaking to you all as a researcher. Uh, I'm also a patient. Uh, I was actually diagnosed with an irreversible metabolic condition uh, or chronic disease, actually five minutes from where we're sitting here today. And I spent the next two decades studying metabolism, both as a root cause, but as a proven solution for multiple chronic diseases. I am here for you today uh, as the longest studied juvenile diabetes patient in the medical literature to sustain therapeutic carbohydrate reduction for over 10 years. Despite all evidence showing I and many other children who are diagnosed with this disease in adolescence are going to get rapid cardiovascular disease, atherosclerotic progression, which shows signs of this within three years, brain damage, neurological development within four years, brittle bones, deteriorated kidney health, potential dialysis, and some form of eye damage and retinopathy within, by, by the time I was 30 years of age. I refuse to accept those outcomes, and I encourage other people to do the exact same. Despite decades of medicinal and technological advancements, there is still no technology or pharmaceutical intervention that normalizes my disease or prevents its ravaging and chronic damage. Our research team, including Harvard Medical School, Boston Children's Hospital, and University of Washington, analyzed over 26,000 patients with juvenile diabetes. In the most expansive study to date, we demonstrated that reducing carbohydrates in a dose-dependent manner normalized glycemic control, reduced insulin, and also medication requirements for this disease. Again, in a direct dose-dependent manner. But my journey sustaining therapeutic carbohydrate reduction for over a decade, as well as many um, thousands of patients with this same exact disease, reveals a truth that extends far beyond juvenile diabetes. This powerful targeted approach is not just a theory. It's a proven intervention reshaping not just management of chronic illnesses such as my own, but more importantly, prevention and reversal. Looking around this room, so how many people in this room have heard of metabolism before? Excellent. Uh, well, unfortunately, nine out of 10 of us have suboptimal metabolic health. In fact, 93% of Americans have some form of suboptimal metabolic health. But more concerning than that is that 80% of us don't actually know it. And ultimately, this is driving skyrocketing rates, progression, even worsening symptoms of things like obesity, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and even psychiatric disorders, which we'll hear a little bit more in a minute. But we know that therapeutic carbohydrate reduction as a proven intervention is not just clinically validated, but it's a rapid tool for not only preventing and reversing things like obesity, prediabetes, and type 2 diabetes, but also alleviating symptoms of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and emerging evidence showing the potential of its use in psychiatric disorders. Instead of costing the healthcare system, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per patient. These interventions have been shown to save upwards of five to eleven thousand dollars per patient per year. This is a you know quite a distinguishing aspect of this type of intervention versus others. Yet, our own USDA guidelines are unequipped to integrate these therapeutic strategies. The American Diabetes Association offers no roadmap for applying carbohydrate restriction or reduction in diseases like juvenile diabetes. And the governing bodies like the American Academy of Pediatrics actively discourages children from doing these interventions, despite the youngest patients being in the most vulnerable position. We should not and cannot wait. We must reform federal and institutional nutrition policies to reflect the overwhelming clinical and epidemiological evidence on this proven therapy strategy. Without clear guidance, clinically, our clinicians are unprepared and in many cases dissuaded from applying these interventions for patients. To foster this change, we must, number one, add routine metabolic screening into clinical standard of care. Mandate tests, like fasting metabolism or fasting, fasting metabolic tests like fasting insulin and glucose levels, expand Medicaid, Medicare for the most vulnerable for medical nutrition therapy, continuous ketone and glucose monitoring, and digital 
uh, dietary tools and, and ultimately provide additional coverage for patients who are suffering from diseases outside of this, including obesity, cardiovascular disease, liver disease, bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, schizophrenia, neurological disorders, cancer, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and infertility. We have an incredible opportunity, and that demands urgency, and we must act now.